Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I'm Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. So today we are going to discuss the lecture eight on our basic aerodynamics course. And we are going to discuss particularly the concept of circulation, which is important for figuring out how lift is generated. And also we are going to look at the Kuta condition, which is required to calculate circulation around an airfoil. So these two important concepts will be there in today's lecture. Now, let us look at the circulation theory of lift. So for example, we have an airfoil here and this is placed in flow. So now if we consider this region around this flow here, in this region, we can essentially define a circulation. And this is essentially given by this symbol gamma here. And this is the integral on this curve C, V cos theta ds, where V is the velocity, ds is the tangent here, and theta is the angle between them. So essentially, that's the mathematical definition of circulation. And if we are able to calculate this quantity, then according to kuta jukowski theorem, we can calculate the lift per unit span as rho V into circulation. So this important theorem is there, which is relating the lift per unit span to circulation. And interestingly, you can calculate circulation also from this here, if you know the lift, the density, and the velocity. Now, these particular equations and theories are all derived from incompressible flow theory, which is there in most aerodynamic textbooks, and this deals with the method to calculate circulation. Now, the circulation theory is compatible with the true physical nature of flow on the airfoil. And to see that, let us visualize the true flow over the airfoil as a superposition of uniform flow and circulatory flow. And I'm going to explain this in the next slide. So right now, let's think that this is what is happening. So the circulatory flow is clockwise. And when we add the circulatory flow to the uniform flow, what we get is the higher velocity above the airfoil and lower velocity below the airfoil, which is actually what we see whenever we do any wind tunnel experiments. So this is what we essentially mentioned in the previous slide. The uniform flow plus the circulation is equal to a generation of lift here. And this is in the clockwise direction. So what will happen is that this is going to cause a lower pressure on the higher surface and a higher pressure on the lower surface. So this is the typical result of this combination of uniform flow and pure circulation. And this is going to create a lift in the upward direction. So this is what we see in an airfoil section when it is placed in flow. Now, how much is this circulation? So the strength of the circulation is the precise value, which when we add it to uniform flow, makes the actual flow on the airfoil leave the trailing edge smoothly. So this is how you calculate the circulation. There is going to be a certain value of circulation, which when you add it to the uniform flow, is going to enforce the CUDA condition. Or in reverse, if you enforce the CUDA condition, then essentially you can calculate the value of circulation, which is there in the airfoil. So now these concepts are very useful. Some of them are coming from potential flow theory. A lot of complex analysis is used in the kuta jokowski methods and so on. And this is a large component of the traditional aerodynamics, which yields nice closed form solutions to many problem. Now, this is important because the generation of lift actually occurs because of circulation. And therefore, the circulation theory of lift gives you a good insight into what's happening on the real airfoil system. There is a uniform flow which is coming, and there is a circulation which is getting created so that the kuta condition is satisfied. And that is essentially going to result in the generation of lift on the airfoil, which is your primary objective as far as flying the aircraft is concerned. 
So these were some important concepts. Now, this is very important even in computational fluid dynamics, you have to enforce Kutta condition and so on. So it will always be there as far as the aerodynamic and numerical methods for solving aerodynamic problems are concerned. So with this, I'm going to end this very simple lecture series, which was the introduction to aerodynamics. And the purpose of this was essentially to give people in first year college and even in class 11 and 12 of the high school system an idea about how airplanes fly and some of the very basic things now many of the things i have tried to explain in very simple terms so the connoisseurs and connoisseurs on fluid dynamics may not be very pleased with them but it's pretty useful for actual design purpose and to know physically as to how the aircraft fly and how aircraft can be designed because there are a lot of people nowadays designing small aircraft, designing drones, designing micro air vehicles who need a basic idea about aerodynamics. They need some basic knowledge about the different equations and particularly they need to know what is CL, CM, CD, what is the lift generated by the airfoil section and the drag and how to use the drag to essentially calculate the engine or power plant required for the aircraft and also how much lift is required for the aircraft to take off. So these two concepts are very important. If you do not have lift, the aircraft will not take off. And if you do not surmount drag using some form of engine, then you cannot move forward. So that is why lift and drag calculation is the cornerstone of the aerodynamics science. So I will end this lecture here and I will see you in a video sometime soon. If you have any issues about this course or you would like further material on these topics, please leave it in the comment sections below and I will address them in future videos. So I will see you soon and thank you very much for being part of this course.